Praise the Lord, everyone. It's so good to be in church today, and I'm thankful for God's blessings on our life. I hope that you have had some good things happen to you this week, and you are enjoying the providence of God's care and working in your life. He's a great God, isn't he? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. The old song said, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And he's been very good to us. I'm so thankful for the uh, wonderful reports that we've had. Uh, last week we were praying for Andrea, who was in self-quarantine. Uh, but uh, her test results came back negative, to which we say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Got another report for Julie Dobman this week. Her mother had sent uh, a prayer requests in. She, uh, Julie as well, was waiting for results on a test and yesterday got the answer back. Praise God, the test results are negative. And so we wanna give God praise. We give him glory today. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayers and bringing us through. We've also been through some difficult things and uh, it's in God's hands as to what ultimately happens, but we know he's going to bring us through every situation and every trial. Amen. I want to go to the book of Galatians chapter six and uh, our focus verse is going to be in verse 17. Um, as we understand that Paul has spent some time and he did in several of his epistles of uh, convincing the saints of that time that uh, their focus was on serving God in faith and living by grace. There were many that tried to bring in other elements into the church and uh, as well as um, some of the routines, rituals of the Jewish faith. Paul spent some time letting them know those things were uh, uh, not effective under the dispensation of grace. And here he has taught them that uh, uh, circumcision of the flesh will not uh, amount to salvation. Um, verse 15, he says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. That is the message that was brought forth. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. I'm thankful today that all sins have been washed away and behold, all things become new. Praise God. My past is gone. The, the person I used to be, God has changed for the better. And I know that you're rejoicing in that testimony in your life as well. And so in verse 17, Paul makes this statement. He says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me. In other words, don't bother me with these issues again. We preach this. This is the gospel. Hold to the gospel, Galatian church. And then this statement just stands out so strongly in my mind. He says, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. In this simple statement, Paul declares that God will provide and he will sustain. God will deliver us from every situation. But we want to also remember that some things may stick to us. There are some heart pains that, that might still be present. There are some memories. There are some uh, losses that we might face. But we come through it with this understanding that in all things, God is victorious. And there's a testament to the power of God in our life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the book of Joshua, chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, it's recorded that when the nation of Israel came to the Jordan River, that the instructions were they were to cross the river. But before they left, one man from each of the 12 tribes was to remove a stone, a rock, a good-sized rock, from the middle of the river. The, the Bible says it this way. They took 12 stones out of the midst. I want you to grasp that phrase out of the midst of the river. And when they got to the other side and they set up where they were going to have camp that night and stay overnight, 
they began to stack those rocks and they built a memorial unto God. Praise the Lord. I believe that out of the midst of what we go through, in the middle of the coronavirus crisis, that the church is going to bring forth stones of testimony and build up a memorial to the delivering power of Jesus Christ. Something's coming out of this, amen, to the glory of God. Now, Paul had similar experience as he had served the Lord. He encountered numerous trials. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, he outlines some of these as he went through infirmities or sickness, if you will. You could perhaps even use the word disease. He endured reproach, necessities, the lack of needful things. He went through persecutions and distress. He suffered what he called a thorn in the flesh. Paul had prayed three specific times for God to take this thing away from him. But the answer he got back from God was this. My grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is all you need, Paul, to get through this situation. You've got grace, you're going to overcome. What a message for us to understand today. Paul took it this way. In verse 9, he said he, he learned to take glory, to glory in infirmity. And in verse 10, he said he takes pleasure in infirmity and the reproach and all the difficulties that he encounters. And so when we get to Galatians chapter 6, and he adds this phrase in there, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's presenting to us this understanding that some things are going to stick. Some things are going to be there. Paul, I believe, had literal marks in his body from where he had been whipped for Jesus Christ, where he had been stoned because of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 and so he had actual scars in his physical body. We know this, that life situations leave scars. It leaves things upon us emotionally, sometimes mentally, but spiritually we can overcome. I got to thinking about the round scar generation. I'm a part of that. So are many people. Anybody born before 1970 for a period of time there, if you get a chance to look at their shoulder, some of you are watching today, you're probably already reaching over. Oh yeah, I've got one of those right on my shoulder and I have one as well. It represents victory over a global crisis that was attacking uh, uh, here in the United States and the rest of the world. That, that crisis was smallpox. For most of us from that area, era of time, we have the, the mark near our shoulders. But it represents something. We may not remember the pain. Matter of fact, I don't remember ever getting the shot. But I've had the mark all my life. Uh, but it was a mark of parents that were concerned enough to bring their children to get vaccinated, to find uh, what would be necessary for them to uh, be healed or, or prevent the uh, onslaught of smallpox in their bodies. It, was all, it is also a mark of those who were willing to take this vaccination on uh, and uh, prevent it from spreading to those that will be born in the next generation. There are additional crises that have arisen ever since that time. We're in one now. And the thought began to come to me, what would be the telltale sign of 2020? What is it that's going to come forth from this that should the Lord uh, choose to wait on rapturing the church out of here? Should we be here another five to ten years? I don't think it's possible. I don't believe that that is going to be the case. But if he were to be that patient, and we were here five years, ten years from now, as uh, uh, historians and, and media, media reflect on this time, what will be some of the outstanding points of this crisis? 
For some that were shut in during the stay home, stay safe orders and chose to be healthy and fit, we already are hearing some of the testimonies as they're losing weight. They're feeling more strength in their bodies and, and greater energy. Now, there are also some who have not chosen to do that. And the mark in your body is going to look quite a bit different. <laughs> the difference is it's not going to show in your chest and your, your shoulders and your upper muscles. It's probably going to show more in your belly and your thighs. Don't ask me how I know. But uh, uh, there's a difference in it. We do know this. We are seeing the beginning of sorrows. We do know that the end time that the Bible speaks of is near. But can I share this today? I'm not losing sleep over what might happen next. I've been working for Jesus as long as I'm here. As long as I'm in this situation. As long as God has set us in this place. I believe it's up to the church to keep working for him. I really am not worried about the mark of the beast. There are some folks have made some comments and some concerns about that. My greatest concern, my greater concern is for the mark of Jesus Christ in my life. As long as I have his mark, as long as I have a touch from him, as long as I have that indwelling of his spirit that changes my life, changes my future, then I consider every other mark to fall short. It is actually irrelevant because the mark of God on my life will take me through, will take me over and above all the problems that we face. That's where we are at as the church. So what will be the telltale mark of the church that closed its doors for its buildings and reached out to the world in COVID-19 of 2020 and through prayer, through caring, through sharing and delivering the gospel on a scale never seen before reached out to this world. I wonder what the testimonies are going to be. I wonder what the results are going to come forth as, uh, as it in the annals of history, the church looks back. Perhaps we'll be in glory. We'll be able to look back. You remember? And we begin to meet people that come forth. We begin to meet different ones that have been delivered. Those that have been set free. Those that have found healing in every possible way. Physically, mentally, emotionally. Praise God. Great things are happening as the church is being the church. The church will go through some things, but Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are called forth, we are separated unto God. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. What that means is not that we're strange or different or odd, but it means that we have been set aside, set apart for his purpose. What is God's purpose today? I believe that Peter answers this in, in 2 Peter, or 1 Peter rather, chapter 2. It's, he says in verse 11, uh, well, verse 9, first of all, that we are to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So the first thing we're to do is to praise God. And our praise is demonstrated uh, uh, to those around us. Uh, around us are people that are living in fear today. There are some that are very worried about what is happening in their lives and in their loved ones' lives. And, and fear is natural. We worry too. But we've got an answer today in that we can take it to God in prayer. And then we just begin to worship him and, and, and praise him for who he is. The second part, uh, Peter brought out here, verse 11, he says to abstain from fleshly lust. We're called to be different. Uh, and he also says in verse 12 that our conversation is to be honest. Conversation there means our lifestyle, our manner our, of, of behaving. There's a difference in how we conduct ourselves. There's a difference in how we live. 
Peter even went to the point of saying that we should submit ourselves to every ordinance of man, including that of the king and of the governor. And so we are called upon to be law-abiding citizens. We're called upon to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are called upon to live a life that demonstrates the power of God in our life at all times. The church is called to be different. There's a mark that has been put upon us. I believe some of the mark for the church of 2020 is this. Faith over fear. Praise God. Worship where we are at rather than where we long to be. We are at home rather than in the church building. But worship continues. It, it moves forward. We believe in prayer before protest. We believe God is greater than government. And righteousness comes before riot or revolution. Our goals are higher than this world's turmoils. Come on now. I'm not against anybody uh, maintaining your own per personal opinion on issues that are going on. But if that's the main focus in our lives, then we as the church are missing the point of why we are here. Our purpose is to uplift the Lord Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to show him as being the answer that this world needs. And he is the answer. How many believe Jesus is the answer today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not going to solve spiritual issues with government intervention or a police force or human efficiency. That's not the answer. And so we pray and we praise Jesus Christ. You know, house meetings are the new normal for the church. In 2020, I think that's going to be a mark. That's going to be something that this, this time is remembered by, in the, that the churches went home. But in every home, praise God, the church is there or should be there. This was standard format for the first church in the book of Acts. Paul preached in many houses. Matter of fact, there was one house he preached in in which it was full and uh, you might remember the story there in Acts. A young man sat in the window. Perhaps there was nowhere else to go. I don't know. But uh, a three-story home. And he's sitting in the window. And while Paul is preaching, he fell asleep. And fell out the window and broke his neck. The thought come to me that while we're having house meetings, someone better wake up Eutychus. That was his name. Someone needs to wake up Eutychus while we're having house meetings. Where is the sound of your praise today? Where is your prayer? Is God just as real for you at home as he ever has been in the church house? I believe it should be because our relationship with him is what matters the most. That is the mark, the mark upon our lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now Luke recorded this, that after Eutychus fell and uh, they went out to check on him and he'd actually died. We find that Paul went over there, prayed over him and raised him back to life. I find it a little bit humorous in some ways. He wasn't done preaching. He said, come on, we're going back inside. We're going to finish what we started. And back in the house they go. And Luke said that Paul preached the rest of the night until the break of day. Till the sun come back up. And I got to thinking something must have been happening at home. Because it's not recorded of anyone else falling asleep. They woke Eutychus up. I have to think that that service as Paul preached the rest of the night away was one that was filled with demonstration of the word and of spirit. I believe the house must have been filled with power and praise. I wonder today, is there a source of the word in your house? Is it associated with power? 
Is it associated with praise? Do you have something happening at home today as you serve the Lord Jesus Christ that you can still live a separate lifestyle for him? You still love him. You still worship him. You still praise him in the midst of the mess. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I think it'd be good if we did that right now. God, we love you today. We worship you today. We thank you at all times. Your praise, Lord, is continually, continually in our mouths. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. And I'm thankful for his presence in our lives. You know, this week, many of us prayed for Julie Dodman. Her mom had contacted me, and uh, Julie was having breathing difficulties. She was feeling quite warm and was on her way to the hospital, and so we got the post into Ludington prayers, and, and numerous people jumped in there and started praying. <clears throat> Yesterday, Sister Jeannie uh, Miller, uh, Julie's mom, texted me that uh, the the test came back negative. And I'm wondering, because a lot of you are on Facebook and many of you have been tagging in on the Ludington Prayers site, but did anyone notice on there what Sister Jeannie did? It was impressive. She blew up the Ludington Prayers post for where it had said, please keep Julie Dodman in prayer. Down further, you will find this very exciting post that's add to it, added to it, put in full uppercase letters, which if you're familiar with texting and, and messaging, you know what that means. Praise God. She shouted. And these are the words she shouted. And I want to get Brother Daniel to add these to the screen if possible for the sermon. But uh, these were her words. Update. Test is negative. Exclamation, 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 exclamation mark. Hallelujah. Nine exclamation marks. Thank you, dear Lord and people that know God. I believe that's the church. We're going to shout. We're going to rejoice. That was great. I was so excited when I saw that. And then I noticed another response on there. This one comes from Sister Pam Carpenter's brother, James. After having lost a nephew that died just a few weeks ago, a sister that's passed away, and now a brother-in-law in the hospital, James put those concerns aside, and he answered in full uppercase letters, God, thank you for another answered prayer. Oh, hallelujah. When we can put things down, I've got some marks. I've got some struggles. I've got some disappointments. But God is good. He blesses me at all times. He watches me all in each and every day. He knows every step I take. He knows where you're at today. He's going to take care of you in every situation. Go ahead and wake up Eutychus in your home today. Go ahead and let your praise begin to flow because we serve a God. We serve a good God. We serve a mighty good God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church will come through this struggle. We will come through every struggle as a marked people that belong to God. Hallelujah. The message is this today. God wins. God wins. Whether we have good days or bad, God wins. Whether it's night or day, God wins. Whether we see life or death, God wins. And we bear the mark, the strength, the deliverance, and the joy of serving him. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer and praise. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we rise up. This is how we make a difference in the world. This is how we lead others through crisis. Prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. Prayer 
and praise. I believe that if we let out a shout, that walls will crumble as they did at Jericho. Giant problems will tumble as with David when he went against Goliath. Our enemy will fade away as happened with Gideon. And fiery hot situations will become manageable as that happened for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In each case, prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. Hallelujah. We're fighting a battle, but we're going to win. We shall overcome. Battle scarred? Yes, we're going to come out. We might, we might suffer a couple of defeats. We might find that there are times that we're allowed to go through some, some, some tribulations. Heartaches? Yes, we might have a few. Discouragements? They happen. But we're holding on to something today. My God is good. His Holy Spirit in my soul today is good. His peace passes all understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Message Bible brings forth Paul's declaration that I talked about earlier in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 in this way. When he spoke of the, um, the mark that was in his body, the thorn that was in his body. It says, at first I did not think of it as a gift. And I begged God to remove it. Three times I asked him. And then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on my handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. So I take my limitations in stride and with good cheer continue serving the Lord. You feel that way today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life itself is a gift. Situations are going to come and go. It will rain on the just and the unjust. Problems come. What matters is what do we do with those problems? The difference is knowing the mark that Jesus is putting upon our life. The difference is knowing that he's doing this for our good. He's bringing us through for a greater healing. He's bringing us through for a greater deliverance. As the music is playing today, this is how we fight our battle. We're surrounded, but we're surrounded by his love. Won't you reach out to him right now? Won't you just go ahead and, and begin to pray to him? If you struggle with feelings inside of self-defense and uh, to the point of not relying on God, this would be a good time to repent. This would be a good time to turn away from our own self-efficiency because it's never enough. It will never be enough to get us to heaven. But God, how we need you today. How we turn to you. How we trust in you. Lord, let us surrender all of our concerns before you today. And as you repent, begin to feel after the spirit of the Lord in your life. Let it begin to make a difference because what's going to happen is you start feeling his spirit. Begin to move and begin to flow. And as the Holy Ghost moves, you're finding your victory. You're finding your strength. You're rising up. You're coming out of this darkness. You're coming into marvelous light. You're going forward as only Jesus can move today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time today. Thank you for your word that you give to us that encourages us, helps us walk in every step, in every move. God, we give you praise today. We offer up our worship before you. As David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so today, I worship you. I worship you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Have a wonderful week in Jesus Christ.
Thank you, Jesus.